session with us for help. All right. All right, let's get started. Again, as I mentioned, if you have questions along the way, just drop them in the chat pod. Megan uh, and Scott may just answer your question or they might pose it to the whole room. Um, so <clears throat> what is it? Why would you use it? What do you need to use it? And how do you use it? Um, first things first, what it is. So Kaltura Capture is one tool amongst the uh, one tool within the whole package called Kaltura. Uh, we're actually having a workshop next week that talks about the broader set of tools that Kaltura provides us. Kaltura is a new campus-wide video um, hosting and creation tool. <clears throat> so there are lots of other things that you can do with Kaltura uh, that we won't cover in this session, but there is a, a new workshop about that next week. So if you're interested in hosting videos, creating quizzes with videos in Kaltura, um, and some of the some some other features uh, that you may be interested in, check out that workshop. I also have some resources that that we will send you at the end of the session. Uh, that cover some of those topics. If you want to dig in and create a quiz right away, or if you have questions about editing videos, um, those extra resources that will be coming your way after the workshop will cover some of that. All right, so Kaltura Capture. Kaltura Capture is uh, the tool, is a tool that is integrated tightly into Blackboard. It allows you to record webcam, screen activity, and audio, any combination of those three things. Um, essentially, the Anything you can put on your screen of your computer, you can record with Kaltura Capture. It will also capture your audio, of course. In many cases, people want to narrate what they're demonstrating on their computer. Um, and it can also incorporate your webcam if you'd like that to be part of the recording as well. As I mentioned, it's integrated in Blackboard. You can share, um, and we'll go through the steps that it takes to share with your students via your Blackboard courses. Um, you can also share outside of Blackboard. The recordings are auto-captioned, so that's one thing you don't really have to worry about. Uh, the auto-captions are very good. There is also a way for you to modify those auto-captions if you need to. Um, you can also make the raw recordings available to you to download. So if you should need the MP4 of uh, your recording for some other purpose, maybe you also want to host it on your YouTube page, or you just want to keep a copy for your own um, for your own sake, uh, that's possible as well with Kaltura Capture. All right, so why would you use it? I think many of you probably have an idea already, which is why you're here. Uh, but here are some of the um, here are some of the common uses of Kaltura Capture. Like other quality screen recording tools, you may have heard of Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic. Um, the screen capture tools are used to record screen activity. One of the one of the things that in this situation makes Kaltura Kaltura a good solution in those cases is the automatic upload of the content to a place, uh, uh, a media library from which you can insert to Blackboard. So with some of those other tools, Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, you kind of have to figure out where to put that video file um, to be able to share, then share it with your students. All right, and of course, it's provided, the Kaltura Capture is provided to you for free. So um, software demonstrations. So if you demonstrate uh, any kind of software in your class, you know, anything that you would have normally put on a projector and, and walked students through Excel, SPSS, a coding interface, somebody in yesterday's session uh, taught design. So they were talking about sharing InDesign and Adobe Premiere and so on. So um, Kaltura Capture is a great tool for that. If you wanted to record a video reviewing a document, so let's say you had a complex um, final project in a course, um, uh, or maybe a syllabus in a course, you could record a, a pre you could record a video where you're just kind of looking at that document with students. You can record webcam video. So um, if you just wanted to do a real quick uh, headshot video, um, sharing some thoughts with students, giving your course a little bit of um, a little bit of teacher presence, uh, you can certainly do that with Kaltura Capture. Uh, and one of the really nice things also about Kaltura Capture being part of our Blackboard um, ecosystem is that students can also use Kaltura Capture. Their process for embedding, their process for publishing to Blackboard is a little different because you'll be building your course. Um, they would, if they used Kaltura Capture, 
they would be sharing via an assignment or via a discussion forum post or something like that. So um, students have a slightly different uh, publishing method. We do have on the guides page on the Keep Teaching website uh, a separate faculty and student uh, Kaltura capture guide uh, for that very purpose. So uh, it is detailed enough that you will likely be able to share that with your students and um, they could work through it. Now it's a new technology, uh, so uh, of course they may need a little assistance and may take them a little bit to get to it, uh, but those instructions are quite detailed um, and it sort of gives a step-by-step. -step. <clears throat> what do you need? So of course right now you need access to Blackboard. Um, you need a microphone if you're gonna capture audio. So um, the most laptops have a microphone. So if you're functioning with a laptop and it, it very likely has a microphone. Um, if you were really interested in, in creating something with some, some nice clear quality sound, perhaps you're creating something now that you think you may use in the future. Um, you could consider picking up, if you don't have one, a, a sort of a, a middle-of-the-road um, uh, headset, wired headset, a USB um, headset that has a microphone and earphones. Um, you could also, you know, uh, use a set of earbuds that you may have laying around that has a microphone. So any kind of microphone will get audio into the device. It's just a matter of how clear you want it to be. Uh, laptop microphones, for example, tend to pick up a lot more ambient noise. It also picks up, laptop microphones also pick up noise from you touching the computer. Sometimes your computer may have kind of a loud fan. And so laptop microphones are great for a quick and dirty presentation. You know, in a lot of these situations, students are not expecting perfection. Um, so if you're just trying to get something out there uh, to, to communicate the information to your student, they're not going to complain about a little bit of fan noise in your recording. But if again, if it's something you want to use, you, can, you might consider using in the future, then uh, a, a $35 uh, USB headset is probably, um, probably something you'd be interested in. A webcam, if you have one, will allow you to capture your webcam video and include in the Kaltura capture window. Most laptops also have a webcam. If you have a laptop webcam, I would not, uh, you know, there's there's less difference between a laptop, laptop webcam and a separate webcam. So if you've got one in your laptop, it's gonna do just fine. Uh, if you don't, or if you're using a desktop computer uh, and you want web webcam video, then you'll probably have to find a webcam. Again, you know, you can find webcams around that $35 to $50 mark that will do just fine for internet video. All right. Any questions before we start the, the demonstration? All right. Again, if those questions come up, just drop them in the, in the uh, chat pod. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the institution page because that's what you would normally see when you log into Blackboard. So as I mentioned, uh, Kaltura Capture is embedded, is, uh, is uh, integrated into Blackboard. One of the sort of primary differences right off the bat is that you're gonna access Kaltura Capture not via the, your course. So instead of going right to your course, we'll go there later when it's time to put your video in a course. But before going to your course, we're gonna go to this tools panel here. Now I will throw out there, um, uh, just based on some of the increased usage we've seen uh, over the last few uh, days and some of the questions we've gotten, if your um, Chrome browser is not updated, there's a chance Chrome did an update uh, a few days ago and um, uh, updated some sort of cookie things. And so if you have trouble accessing this My Media panel, there's two things I'll have you try. One of them is to, to update your Chrome. Uh, you can just come up here and uh, go to settings and make sure you have the most up-to-date Chrome. Um, actually, help and uh, about Google Chrome will allow you to update your Chrome. Uh, the other thing is, if you need to, you could access um, Kaltura My Media for the first time with Firefox. After you do the first access, you can use any browser you like uh, to access Kaltura My Media. But we've had a couple of folks who have had um, get an error message or get a blank screen when trying to access. So then two things to try, make sure your Chrome browser is up to date and then try accessing for the first time from Firefox. After that, it doesn't matter what um, browser you use. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. 
Clicking that link in Blackboard takes you to your media center. So this is your media center. These are only your videos. So the very first time you use Kaltura, uh, your media center will be empty. So these are all videos that I have uh, put into uh, the Kaltura Media Center. This is also where you create new Kaltura capture videos. So I'm going to click here on the Add New button, this blue Add New button. You'll find blue is kind of a theme with Kaltura. It's sort of like an action. So whenever you see blue, that usually means you can do something with that. This is, and I mentioned earlier, there are a suite of tools that are part of Kaltura. And so um, we're not going to cover these in this session, but for example, media upload, this is the option that you could use to just take a video that you have already and put it into Kaltura. So if you have an MP4 on your computer, maybe you published a presentation from PowerPoint or you recorded something on your phone and you got it to your computer, you could upload it here with the media upload option. Once it's in your My Media panel, then you can treat it just like any other video in your My Media panel, and it can be embedded in a course the same way I'm going to demonstrate for Kaltura Capture videos. Express Capture is a recording right in the browser of your webcam and microphone. So if you just needed to do a webcam microphone, uh, recording, you could use Exp Express Capture to do that. These two I'll skip over for now. You can index YouTube videos. There is a, a sort of a, a really interesting but somewhat complex uh, process that you can use to create interactive videos, videos that branch to other videos, for example. Kaltura Capture we're going to cover in a moment, and then any video that's in Kaltura, you can make a video quiz. And so this is one of the ways that you can launch that functionality. All right, but I'm going to start with Kaltura Capture. The very first time you click that Kaltura Capture button, you will get you will not get this little white pop up. You will get this gray screen here, and it will ask you to download and install the Kaltura Capture Recorder. You do need a Windows PC or a Mac computer to be able to use a Kaltura Capture. So you choose which download you like. You run that little download; goes pretty quick and then you have access to Kaltura Capture. Once you do that, the next time you click that button, you'll have this open Kaltura Capture button. The Kaltura Capture, capture application will load. I'm gonna drag it over to this screen so you can see it. All right, so this is the Kaltura Capture um, uh, action panel. There is one more panel, one more part of this, and that you can get to by clicking the Manage option here. Depending on what you're doing in Kaltura Capture, you may see the Manage panel come up automatically. This also will come up automatically after you're finished recording. It will show you the recordings that you have here, whether they're uploaded or downloaded. Um, it will store your history. Once they're uploaded, you'll see a little link right here. That means that your video is uploaded. You can delete them after that if you like to clean up this library area. You can see I've got a couple of video videos here that I have not uploaded yet. They were just tests, and uh, and I'm not going to clutter up the server with, with those tests. Um, don't allow what I just said to dissuade you from playing, though. We don't have any sort of limitation in terms of space or number of videos. So by all means, play around. You can always delete the videos from your library, from the library view if you want. Um, but by all means, play, post some videos, try to create some quizzes, um, and then you're going to let us know if you need support. All right. I do want to take you to the settings panel here. The setting, I'll, I'll mention just a couple of these settings. This one in particular, screen recording quality, you do want this at 1080p. It does make for a slightly larger file, but again, it's going up in the cloud. You don't need to save it on your PC. Um, that's particularly important if you're demonstrating anything uh, that requires sort of a, a detailed picture, which many screen recordings do. Uh, so, you know, if you were just recording your webcam and it was just you, you know, um, that would probably be fine at a lower quality. But if you're demonstrating Excel or you're demonstrating uh, Adobe Premiere or some other computer-based software uh, interface, you want to make sure you have the highest quality here. Um, record system audio, I'll mention that as the last thing I'll mention on this panel. That allows you to record anything on the screen that generates audio. So if you record something on the screen uh, and have this setting set to yes, any noise that your computer makes will also be recorded. So um, if, for example, 
uh, let's say you had um, uh, a video in another system that you had the rights to, and you wanted to use Kaltura Capture to just capture that video, it would also capture the audio along with that video. All right. Um, it will also capture your Outlook notifications and uh, any other noise that your computer might make. And so if you're, if you're going to be making a careful recording and you want to pick up the system audio, then you'll want to silence a lot of those little alarms. In any event, um, that's, that's an option that you have uh, available to you. OK, any questions before I click new recording and go over uh, the other part of this panel? All right, so I'm going to click the new recording button. <clears throat> it's not going to start recording immediately. It's going to give me the chance to make some changes to this interface here. I'm going to put this window away, and that window away, and that window away. <laughs> um, so I've got to dismiss that. All right, and I'm going to I'm going to get an Excel spreadsheet up here. And I'm just going to bring this over into the window as a sample. All right, so um, I'm going to sample capturing some screen activity with this Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> so you can see the options I have available to me here. Screen. Now, I happen to have two screens uh, uh, on this computer, so I actually could choose which screen I want to record. The thumbnail tells you or shows you what you're, gonna, you're, what you're about to record. So I'm on the right screen if I want to capture this Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so that's fine. We'll leave that alone. Um, full screen or select area allows you to record a portion of the screen if you like. And I actually kind of like doing that. Uh, for one thing, I'm not crazy about having um, the time and date sort of in my videos, particularly if I'm going to use the video over again. Uh, and then who knows what else I have on my desktop that I don't really necessarily want stored in my video. So what I tend to do is um, take this, take whatever I'm recording down to maybe, I don't know, three quarters of the size of this, to give myself some room to work over here. That also has a nice little sidelight of giving you a place to put this panel. So this panel doesn't become part of the recording. And you'll see when I start to record this, it actually minimizes to a smaller panel. But not having that, not having uh, having a little room over here allows you to keep that panel out of the recording. Um, this middle option here is normally your webcam. Because I'm on this Collaborate session, Collaborate is using my webcam, so that's not available to me right now. But that wouldn't be the case, of course, if you're recording um, uh, on your on your computer as normal. So you would have the option to turn your webcam on or off. The way these buttons work, you can either click on the button itself, on the image itself, to turn that item on or off. Or you can click below there to um, to make changes to that to that setting. You can see the audio icon is turned on. The microphone icon is turned on. You can see the little um, uh, activity monitor in the middle of the microphone that shows that it's picking up my microphone just fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select area and <clears throat> show you how that works. It's a little difficult to see because it gives you this kind of like light gray overlay. Um, and I let me get that back up. So what I do then is um, I can make this one of the default sizes, or I can just drag this onto my content and line it up with what I want to record. This won't really re this won't really change what students' view looks like. You know, you don't want to make it too small. Um, 1024 by 768 is kind of a sort of a standard size for videos. Um, of course, it will, you know, when a video plays back, the whatever player will adjust the size of the video for the user screen, including potentially for a phone screen or a tablet screen. But 1024 by 768 is a pretty safe size for screen recording. So you can see I've selected the custom. I drag that box and it's 1386 by 889. So as long as I kind of stay above that 1024, then I'm going to be in pretty good shape when it comes to sharing enough detail that students can pick it up in the video. All right. So I like that. I'm going to click confirm. And then this red button starts the recording. So I'm going to pull it over here and I'm going to click start recording. You can see how this panel comes down here out of the recording area. I get a countdown. I usually wait until I see this timer start before I start recording. I've sort of, uh, a couple of times I've started talking as soon as that countdown left my screen and I cut the first second off of my audio. So um, 
Notice that you can still see the, uh, the voice monitor here in the little microphone to show that you're still recording. While you are recording, you have some options available to you. So one of the options you have is stop the recording. Okay, so you, this is when you're done recording, you click stop recording, or you can just pause the recording. You might pause the recording if, let's say, you wanted to do a rearrangement of the screen, or you wanted to kind of, or maybe you, you forgot that you um, wanted to start this with uh, Canada filtered or something like that. Um, you can make a quick change to the screen uh, without that being included in the recording. Now again, as I mentioned, especially in these circumstances, students are not looking for perfection. Um, but if it's something that you that you think that would find they would find distracting or um, confusing, uh, you can use that pause option. One of the other ways I have used that pause option is if I'm demonstrating a uh, a software solution that has some sort of processing time in it. So um, if I'm running a really complex uh, data analysis or uh, let's say I'm demonstrating how Adobe Premiere could be used to publish a video, I might want to pause during the dead space that is the processing time. You know, a, a Adobe Premiere video might take, I don't know, three or four minutes to publish or maybe longer. And so I could just pause and to students, it looks like it went right from publish to finished product. Of course, you may want to warn them that that's not really the way that it works, but then students don't have to sit through, um, you know, three or four minutes of silence. So that's one of the reasons you might decide to use that uh, that pause button. I'm going to turn the recording back on. Uh, the last piece that I'll talk about here is the um, uh, the annotation tools. So here's my annotation panel. If I click this little pencil, I've got an annotation panel. I can use any of these tools to annotate the screen. I kind of like the arrow. So if you want to draw a student's attention to various things on the screen, you can do it that way. This little trash can makes the annotations go away. You can, of course, do you know things with writing. You can change the color. Um, you can put some text on the screen. OK, so uh, those are all options that you have available for you available for you during the session. All right, this changes the <clears throat> size of whatever that is. OK, so you can see I've got a much thinner arrow now, uh, a much thinner line, and it'd be smaller text and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that up. All right, so I'm going to click Stop now, unless there are any questions. Does anybody have any questions while we're recording about the way the recording panel works? All right, so once I click Stop Recording, we're going to take a look at what happens next where it, where we can now find our video and how to get it into Blackboard. I see there's a question in the chat pod. Oh, that's a good question, Scott. All right, so a rec recommendation on video capture link. So um, part of that may have to do with our recommendations in general for video length. So for video that you want students to stay engaged with, obviously shorter is better. Um, if you watch any LinkedIn learning videos, you'll find that most of those videos are between two and five minutes long. They may take a, a complex topic that may take an hour total and divide that up into uh, 10 uh, five-minute videos, uh, but it, it's, uh, that's sort of uh, allows students to take it one bite at a time. It also allows for quick processing. So you record a quick video, it uploads quickly to the server, it processes quickly and is available quickly. Uh, right, Megan has a question. Uh, if you did have the webcam turned on, would someone watching the recorded video see both you and a screen video and the video of you? The answer to that is yes. And so Megan, if I, if I forget, remind me when we get over to Blackboard, uh, I can show you an example of a video that I took uh, with both webcam and screen recording on. April asks if we can edit the video. Yes, you can, April. There are some basic editing features built into Kaltura. I'll point you to where those are. Um, we won't necessarily go through all the edits, but I do have a resource that you'll get in the email after the session. You can do cropping, so you can crop ends off the video. You can cut sections out of the middle of the video. Um, that's kind of like the primary edits that you can make. You know, it's not Adobe Premiere, so we can't do <laughs> layers and fancy things. But yeah, if you make a mistake and you just want to reduce, just cut um, the middle out of something or you want to trim the ends, you can absolutely do that right in the system. All right, so I'm going to click stop, uh, stop recording.
and you'll get a, are you sure? And I'm going to say yes. So it takes you back to the, uh, to the capture or capture settings panel. Here I can give it a title. So I'm going to call this um, a Thursday. Well, let's not do that. Let's call it um, Homus 510 Excel training demonstration. Um, I'm going to give it a description. Right. It's worth your time to put that information in here because that information is going to go with when it goes to your media library and it will also go with when you put this video in your course. So it's worth your time to do that here. It makes it easier to find your video when you get there and it uh, brings that information with when you embed it in your course. So uh, do consider including it here. Uh, you can also add tags if you want. Tags will more or less help you find the video later. Um, tags actually will be automatically added here by uh, the scan of the captions. So when the system auto captions your video, if you say a word more than twice, like I'm sure that in this video I said Excel more than once, it will, um, it will add that as a tag to your video. So you'll get automatically tagged, but you could tag it like if I wanted to, perhaps I could, I could tag it Omis 510. Um, so that um, at a later date, maybe a year from now, maybe I'm, I don't remember exactly where all my OMIS 510 videos are, I can search for this tag. More than likely, it would come up if I put it in, this, uh, in the title that way, uh, but it never hurts to have it in the tags as well. All right, I'm going to click Save and Upload. It's going to take just a few minutes to upload that video again. Shorter uploads and, and processes faster. The longer it is, the longer you'll have to wait. Uh, we did. I, uh, I worked with somebody yesterday who had about an hour-long video. They had to wait between 10 and maybe 15 minutes for that to process on the server. Um, and you know, if if 100 people submit a video at once, then you know things may get you know may take a little bit longer than that. Once you see this link here and there's no more messages about uploading, then you know your video is on the server, and you can be done with this panel. I usually just minimize it and then pop into Blackboard to check. So let's do that. Find the right window here. I'm going to go back into now. Remember, I'm not going to my course yet. I'm going to go into Kaltura My Media. This is your media library. And you can see my video is here. The title came along, the description came along. You can see that it's processing. You don't have to wait for it to finish processing to go do something with it. So if you want to plop it in your course right away, as soon as it's, you can do that, and as soon as it's done processing, then it will be available or playable for students. But before we leave this interface, I do want to show you a few things in the My Media section here. All right. So for one thing, if you click on the video itself, and I think I'll leave this one alone let it process, but I'll show you one that we did yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. You can see that this one has auto captions. The auto captions are really pretty good. They include capital letters and punctuation, which is sort of half the battle. Uh, they're not necessarily perfect. I don't know if I said Kaltura anywhere in here, but it, it has trouble with Kaltura. So it will have trouble with proper names as usual. If you teach content that has lots of scientific terms and proper names, then uh, you may be more concerned with the captions. Uh, but in any event, uh, pretty good captions. You have this nice little transcription panel here. Students can use the transcription panel to hop around the video. Um, you can also search the transcript. So a pretty nice little feature. Um, under the Actions tab here, this is how you get to some of the uh, additional sort of modifications that you can make to the video and, and change the settings. I'm going to pause it just so that's not moving around. Um, I'm going to click Actions here. I'm not going to take you through all of these because we'd be here for a couple hours. Edit is how you edit the settings for the video. So this is how you can change, and I'll take you in there in a second, but this is how you change who it's shared with. This is how you change the title and the description, um, uh, who owns the video, and so on. So that's edit. Um, 
We'll talk about publish in a minute. You will essentially be publishing this in your Blackboard course. So uh, you probably won't use this publish item here very much. Analytics is where you can look at the analytics of your video, like who's watching, uh, how long they watched, how long on average your students are watching your video. Again, thinking about how long your video is and trying to maximize the engagement of your students. Caption and enrich is where you can modify the auto captions. So uh, auto captions are ordered automatically for you. Um, but once the captions are in, you can use this interface to modify those captions. Launch editor, this goes back to April's question. Um, April asked if the video could be edited. Let's say I um, I was real good right up until the end, or maybe I forgot to press stop recording at the end, and so I've got a bunch of gobbledygook at the end of the video. You can use the editor to chop that off. All right, I do I do spot I did spot a Jay He's question. Uh, would it be possible to edit the auto capture? Um, since she asked, since you asked Jay He, I'm gonna, just going to pop in this real quick and show you what that looks like. So this is the um, this is the machine caption order that happened yesterday when I um, when I uh, created this video. Again, that happens automatically. Um, it takes, you know, it's a lot like YouTube. It takes between 30 minutes and a couple hours for the captions to show up. Um, once they're there, though, you can use this little pencil. And this is the interface for modifying the captions. It's really nice. Um, you know, you can just come here and uh, find something you don't like. So I'm looking for something I don't like here. It's really pretty good. I didn't use a lot of proper names. So here's, um, no, that's okay. Well, in any event, let's say um, I meant to say I can change the color to blue. I can just type that there. You actually get a little preview of here what that looks like on the screen. When you're good to go, you can click save. Up here, the search in captions and replace with. So let's say you were saying something like um, uh, maybe um, the name Marcus and Kaltura, the auto captioner, called it Mark Us each time. You could search for Mark, Mark Us and replace it with something like that. So that's possible using this. Um, using this search and replace. Now, sometimes it, <laughs> if you say Marcus enough times, it will spell it one way one time and another way another time. So sometimes you do have to just scan through here and pick up something, uh, find, find things that you're, not, that you're not liking. All right, so that's how you edit the captions. Click Save. It says, are you sure you want to save? Um, I'll say yes. All right, and I'm going to go back. OK, so let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about here? No, I don't think so. OK, any questions before we talk about how to get this thing into your course? After the video is completed and added to the library, is it possible to download the video capture? Ah, thank you, Scott. OK, so um, there is. I did miss a step uh, to make that possible. Um, if you have this properly enabled, you're going to see a button right here that says download. Okay, we don't see it, so I need to check the checkbox. Um, if uh, while I'm here, I'm going to mention these two buttons: download and printer. These are related to the transcript. They're on the transcript panel, so students can download and/or print the transcript of the video. So again, nice little feature. Um, but if I want to make downloading the source file available, here's how I do that: I click Actions. I click edit to edit the settings. And then one of these settings is downloads. I click source, I click save, and I go back to the media. And now under the details panel, I've got this download option. Because I've got this kind of my view is a little bit scrunched, it wasn't broken out as a button. Sometimes you'll see that button here. And if they scrunch it down a little bit, then it puts those buttons together in this details menu. So clicking this download button will allow me to download the MP4. Thanks for that question, Scott. With that MP4, then you could save it locally. You could upload it to YouTube later, um, whatever you like. All right. So if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to pop over to I'm going to close the My Media section for now. And I'm going to go into a course. Now, 
Um, let's do this real quick. Um, I want to do a quick poll. All right, so tell me whether you use, which style of Blackboard you use, Blackboard original styled courses or Blackboard ultra styled courses? All right, well, that pretty much answers my question. We should probably look at both of those options. And so, so let's do that. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at an original style course and see what that looks like. Um, can I get here? All right, so let's pop into an original style course. All right, so here I am. Basically speaking, there are two ways in both systems to give students access to your video. One is to provide them with a link to the video. And the link, in, the link to the video will play in a window very similar to the window we were just looking at. So it's got that same white page view with the video in the middle. That's a link. Then we're gonna talk about in both, in both regular and ultra, original and ultra, how to include a playable thumbnail. There are reasons that you would do both of those. Um, uh, for simplicity's sake, for some, from the point of view of simplicity, the link is, is sometimes easier to deal with, it's easier to fit in your course, doesn't take up as much room on the screen. Um, and in particular with software demonstrations, uh, students may not really be interested in watching in a thumbnail view. It's pretty difficult to see in a thumbnail what someone's doing in Excel. Um, so you might choose the, the link option. So this is probably the only thing that I would complain about, and uh, and I think they're going to try to change it for us, and that is the name of this feature. So this is um, this is actually what it looks like when you put a video into a course using the link option. All right. So here's how you do that: you go to Build Content, and you go to Kaltura Embed. Now, when we see the word embed, uh, I know in my mind I think of a playable thumbnail. It's actually not what this does. Playable thumbnail is a different process. So if you wanna put a link to a, a Kaltura capture video or a Kaltura video in general in your course, you find the spot in the course you wanna put that video and you go to build content and Kaltura embed. I'm gonna pop into module three actually, and we're gonna put it there. You can see actually what a playable embed looks like right there. So I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna put our, our other OMUS Excel filtering demonstration in. Um, by clicking Build Content and then Kaltura Embed. Now you'll get a familiar view. You'll see your media library again. And you'll see, remember I said blue, blue button means action. So you've got these blue buttons that say Embed. So you pick the video you want to embed. Looks like our video is done processing. I'm gonna click Embed. And it's gonna drop it right down here. All right, so notice uh, it brought the title along. It actually appended the time of the video to the title and then gave you a description. Now it looks like it wasn't, wasn't crazy about my, um, my uh, apostrophe in my description. So I can edit any part of this, the title uh, or the description by opening this item up here. Just clicking edit, just like you normally would. I'm gonna take the time off. Maybe students would appreciate that, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, uh, I'm gonna clean that up that way. Now, I'm gonna leave, it looks like it left it okay here. Um, and I'll uh, fix up the description that way. And now you can see I've got it a little bit cleaned up. Of course, um, yeah, I put this thing where I want it and if students click on it, if you click on it and students click on it, they will get the same view. It launches and plays in a window. Just like that. Because our captions aren't done yet for this video, you won't see the little closed captioning window. You won't see the transcript panel because the captions aren't done yet. Um, you obviously won't see all the features that you have available as the owner of the video, you know, to make modifications and change the settings and all. Um, so this video will play this way. This is probably also the preferred view if you think you have students who will watch on a mobile device because it's gonna launch this video in a separate window. Watching a, watching a video in a thumbnail view on a mobile device is pretty tough to deal with. Um, so if you think you have students watching on a mobile device, this is probably the way to go also. But I will show you how to 
do that thumbnail view. I'm going to go back to that module three. You can see the thumbnail view here. Here's how that happens. A thumbnail view goes into any item that has a, um, a uh, rich text editor. So for example, an item, also an assignment, a discussion post, um, even a quiz question, um, you can insert a video into any of those things. So if I just create an item, uh, and uh, let's just call this Excel demo. The mashups tool is where you're going to access your videos. Now this is going to create that playable thumbnail view. I'm going to use Kaltura Media. After that, everything is the same. You're going to see your Kaltura Media library. You're going to see those blue buttons that allow you to embed that video. You click the embed button for the one that you want. You click submit. And now this is my new, this is the one we recorded today, the OMAS Hen Excel filtering demonstration. All right, so that's how you create a playable thumbnail uh, in Blackboard. Students will, in most cases, use this mashup tool, if the mashup button, if you're asking them to use Kaltura Capture to create content. So most likely they'll be submitting a video via an assignment link, or in a discussion forum. And so they will use that same process. And we have specific instructions for students. So I think I mentioned on the King page, we have two different instructions, one for students, one for faculty. All right. Any questions about Blackboard Original, the way Blackboard Original works before I skip over to Ultra? Um, Scott asked, is there a way to edit the thumbnail? Yes. So. Um, the uh, if you've used YouTube for something like this, you can either upload your own uh, thumbnail, or uh, the system will show you several sort of screens or sort of captures from the from your video that you can select to to use as your thumbnail. So, like even if you wanted to save a a, a picture on your desktop of maybe. Um, uh, Omus 510 title screen or something like that, and you wanted to use that for all your videos, you could definitely do that. All right, good question. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this original course away and open up an Ultra course. All right, so this is my Ultra course. I'm sorry, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I'm going to show you first how to put that link version in. So here's how you do that. The language is, the lingo is a little different in Ultra. So, um, and, uh, and we're all just sort of learning Ultra. So uh, clicking on this little create button, to put a link to a video here, what we do is go to this thing called the content market. The content market is essentially the link to all of the like integrated Blackboard tools. So you'll see what I mean when I click on that. It's going to show me all of the integrated Blackboard tools that, that Blackboard has integrated into, uh, into Blackboard. Um, the one that I want is not get the Kaltura Media Gallery, just to call that to your attention. It's Kaltura Embed. So it's the same thing as the original course. To do the link, you use the button that says Kaltura Embed. And so if I click that, everything else is the same after that. I get the same, my media library. I get the same blue buttons. I click the, the option that I'm interested in, and it's going to drop, in this case, that link uh, on the screen for me. You can see it had it apparently had the same problem with whatever I typed in the description from the recording session. Uh, so I can modify this. I can click edit, and I can clean that up then. Okay, I can clean up the title if I want. And if you haven't worked in in Blackboard Ultra, you know you can see that everything's just a little bit different. Um, but if I click on this, it's going to be the exact same view that you saw when I clicked on the link in Blackboard Original. To create a playable thumbnail in Ultra, in an analogous way to an original course, it has to be inside of something. It has to be inside of what sort of corresponds to an item or an assignment or a discussion post. So in Blackboard Ultra, one of those things is create document. So a document in Blackboard Ultra is kind of a container uh, that you can create real things for students to look at at the same time. And so I'm just going to call this, I'm going to name my document, if I can get up here. Uh, 
perhaps I'm creating a, uh, a document that has several of these demonstrations on it, or I'm creating a document that has some introductory material and then has a video. Um, so uh, I've got this document now. I'm ready to add my video to it. I click Add Content. I can put some text in here. I can describe my video. And then when I'm ready to, I use this little button down here. This is similar to the mashup tool in Original. I click here. And now, unfortunately, the lingo changes just slightly. And I use Insert Edit LTI Item. LTI is, is an integration. It's a Blackboard integration. Uh, so I click that. And same thing. Everything is the same after this. I go to Kaltura Embed. I see the same My Media and click the same blue button. Ultra actually gives me this nice little feature. I can edit the title right away and click Insert. All right, you can see now I have a playable thumbnail in the middle of my document. And I'll just kind of mention here at this point, this, this goes to my point about playable thumbnails and software demonstrations don't always necessarily go together. Who knows what's going on in this Excel video. Um, you do have, students do have the option to click this little button to go full screen. Don't worry, as, as, you, as you play it, the, uh, as you play it and as it processes that um, content sharpens up, so. Um, but again, think of thinking about your students, potentially clicking this little tiny button on a mobile device might be uh, problematic. So again, think about, you know, where you're deploying this, who's going to be using it, um, and, uh, and that will help you decide between the two options. All right, so we've talked about where to find the Kaltura Capture Tools. Um, how to use the Kaltura Capture panel, how to get it uploaded, where to find it once you upload it, and then how to embed it in two ways, in a regular and an original and an ultra course. Um, are there any questions? That's a really good question, Jehi. So Jehi asks, could you just use this to record um, a lecture presentation with PowerPoint slides? So, um, let me just pull in our presentation from today, and maybe I'll just kind of pop into this slide. So this is our presentation uh, that we're looking at today. If I wanted to, I could just start a new recording, select the area, line it up. Perhaps I want to use this view instead of using a full screen view. Again, kind of take a look at that. 1024 by 768. If it's if it's that big, then it's probably good enough to capture. If it were much smaller, then you would probably want to go full screen and capture the whole screen. But in this case, what I like about this view is I have control over here on the left of what shows up in that recording view. All right. So now if I click, if maybe I'll find myself to the first screen, I'm going to click confirm. I'm going to click record. And now it's going to record everything inside of this red border. And if I change slides, that content is going to change. If I need to gather my thoughts, I can click pause, gather my thoughts. Maybe maybe I see a mistake coming up on a slide and I want to change it. I can pause it. I can switch to that slide. I can, I can make that change, go back to the slide I was on before, resume the recording. And then when I switch to the new slide, I my I'm in good shape. Notice um, this little panel is right here. So probably don't want that in the recording. Okay. So you can move that little panel. So right now I am not recording this. Oops. I'm not recording this section up here. Let me get that back up. I'm not recording this section above this red area. So there's nothing keeping me from moving this um, above. Well, maybe it doesn't like that. There we go. We got it over there on the side. For some reason, it doesn't like being up at the top. Um, so yeah, so I could definitely use this for recording a PowerPoint presentation, and uh, that's one way to do it. I'll go ahead and click Stop on my recording. I guess I will mention, since we're here, um, you can preview the recording here before you upload it. And it will play the sound in the video. It'll be tiny. There's not really a way to make this big. But you can see it's just clipped down to the um, 
to the PowerPoint slide, you can see probably later where I moved that, um, I moved that uh, little guy out of the way. So that's not on the screen anymore. Eventually I figured it out. There we go. Um, so you can preview the recording before you upload it that way. That's a good question. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, so Erica asks, how is this different from VoiceThread and from VidGrid? Well, so I'll start with VidGrid. So VidGrid is a tool that we had been piloting along with Kaltura. Um, VidGrid's pilot is going to end at the end of the semester. We do have a, quite a bit of leeway. So, um, you know, given the circumstances, they are giving us some leeway. So um, if anybody has any content, in, well, first of all, if anybody's working in VidGrid right now, um, we're not telling them to switch. Uh, that content is migratable. Uh, we don't want to get in the, in the way of anybody's um, workflow. Uh, we don't want to slow anybody down by saying, no, you should use this tool instead. Um, so if anybody's work, working in VidGrid right now and is comfortable, we're going to let them go ahead and then help them migrate and transition in calmer times. Um, so technically, the VidGrid uh, uh, pilot ends at the end of the semester. Again, we'll have plenty of lead time to help migrate that content uh, after the pilot ends. So the university is adopting Kaltura. Um, Kaltura has given us sort of permission to use the entire system while, um, while the sort of adoption works its way through the process. Um, so we currently have access to all of Kaltura to use that way. It is different from VoiceThread in a couple of other ways. So VoiceThread, you may be familiar if you watched, if you came to any of the um, uh, workshops. It is also a way to store video, so you can host um, uh, you can host uh, content in VoiceThread. VoiceThread is more naturally used for um, video and audio communication between people, but it will it does work in a pinch for uploading recordings. Um, Vid, uh, VoiceThread has a great workflow for students creating presentations collaboratively. So if, any, if, you, if you ever need your students to create a presentation collaboratively, like a group presentation, VoiceThread is definitely your go-to for that. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> 